In this match, everybody starts in this ring, which is ring number one. The first elimination comes when they are thrown from ring number one into ring number two. The battle in this ring will end when only one man is not thrown into ring number two. In ring number two, they throw over the top rope to the concrete. And when that takes place, the man is eliminated and goes to the dressing room. When there is one man left in ring number two, he wrestles through the man who wins in ring number one for the $20,000 prize money. Introducing to you at this time, former world's heavyweight champion, Jack Briscoe. Tom, Tom Jones. Il Halcone. Neil Muscaris, Pepper Gomez, Tiger Conway Jr., the maniac Mark Lewin, the maniac uh, Gary Hart, the man who just put up the best battle I have ever seen against Andre the Giant, the spoiler. Greg Valentine, Killer Tim Brooks, El Gran Marcus, and if I may mention Gino Hernandez. So this now, ladies and gentlemen, the girl wrestlers were prohibited by the law of the state of Texas from entering this match. The law of the state of Texas. Blame that. Ready? You are ready? I beg your pardon. I almost missed him. Andre the Giant. And another man who doesn't stay on the same side of the ring long enough, Bruiser Brody. Finally, the match gets underway, and it takes a long time to get 22 men started. It takes a longer time to get 22 men stopped. But you've got all the explanation about the girls having been entered into this match. They were told that they could not enter. They kept insisting that they could, and put the promoter and the commission right on the spot. But the common sense decision is that two young ladies should not, should not be placed in the middle of some 22 men and that of course was for their own safety as well as for propriety may we now tell you that everybody is in ring number one 
The object is to throw everybody into ring number two, which is the closest ring to you. From that point on, it is a matter of throwing everybody over the top rope to the concrete here on the Coliseum floor. And when a man hits the concrete, he is then eliminated from contention altogether. When there is one man left in each ring, they move into the same ring and battle for the $20,000 in prize money. Andre the Giant now in danger of being thrown over the ropes into ring number two. You see on the outside of the ring, Mark Lewin pounding at Andre the Giant. Now, getting thrown over the top rope in ring number one is not an infraction uh, of the rules, nor does it eliminate a man because he must be thrown into ring number two. And Andre the Giant is a tough man to throw any place, uh, no matter how many men you've got trying to throw him. In the background, Greg Valentine is pounding over an opponent. But Tim Brooks holding on to Andre the Giant, hoping somebody's going to haul off and weaken Andre with perhaps a series of, of blows. But it's not going to be Gino Hernandez because Andre now has Tim Brooks and Gino Hernandez backed up into the corner and he is using his ample posterior and all of his 500 pounds to press them up against the turnbuckle. In front of you, you see the spoiler as he grabs uh, the Neil Moskers and tries to help throw him over the top rope. There's Moskers retaliating to on the spoiler and action continuing all across the, the ring in ring number one. That's Hal Cohn in the strange looking mask beyond the group in the corner. We've got three masked men, the four masked men in there. Grand Marcus, and, and here is the being thrown over the top Jack rope Briscoe. and down Please. onto the, the canvas. That was Jack Briscoe, former world's heavyweight champion, and Andre the Giant responsible for throwing him into ring number one. From now on, Anybody who comes Tom into Jones. ring number one is going to have to battle with uh, with Briscoe. There is Tom Jones. So we've got the makings of a battle in ring number two and still have about 20 men in to go in ring number one. Coming in is Gary Hart. He has just been thrown across the space between ring number one and ring number two. They want Gary Hart. To land in this second ring. So everybody's looking to see who's going to be eliminated first from this battle, and it's Jack Briscoe and Tom Jones who have the pleasure of punishing Gary Hart in his run for the money. The spoiler lifted by Andre the Giant and hauled over that top rope. Here is Jack Briscoe going for a spinning toe hold or a figure four leg breaker. And we've got four men in ring number two, the ring closest to you. And it's Andre the Giant, and it took about six guys, seven guys, to get him over, and some of them, of them just came along, going along with the, the avalanche that moved and got them over the ropes. And Andre the Giant is after Gary Hart. You see him headbutting Gary. Uh, Mark Lewin, here's Mark Lewin, who is in ring number two also and pounding away at uh, at Andre as they back up against the um, the ropes. So, so Andre is going around using that big head of his as his, his ultimate weapon. And we've got more elimination here now and as Gary Hart goes outside the ring, Andre the Giant tries to draw him back in where he can get after him and Andre is being slowly lifted uh, from from by his legs and pulled down by his hair but he decides he's not having any of that he still wants Gary Hart and you can see him reaching under there to kick it at Hart and, and, and Mark Lewin and he's after Mark Lewin but Andre the Giant has eliminated himself by going over the top rope to get at Hart and Lewin and as this crowd screams its approval Andre the Giant is no longer in this match, whether he realizes it or not. Andre has been eliminated. So the ranks are gradually dwindling 
and over the top rope comes somebody, but they uh, on, on the ring apron, and Gino Hernandez threw him across. That was Grand Marcus. Gino just saved the, the bacon of Grand Marcus. So on the far ring, we have Tiger Conway Jr. battling up against the uh, Greg Valentine in solid fashion. And here is in the still in that far ring, Bruiser Brody. There is El Halcon who, who is trying to clear ring number one, the one on the far side. So we've got more than half of the people eliminated, and more than half of the of that group are in, in ring number one. There, there is one man in that in the far ring, and that one man is Greg Valentine. Now this means that uh, we've got Bruiser Brody, Gino Hernandez, Grand Marcus, and Tom Jones in the in ring number two, and over the top ring. Tom Jones is eliminated. That leaves uh, Marcus. It leaves. Gino and they are pounding away at uh, Bruiser Brody hoping to eliminate him holding him and hitting him Marcus doing the holding and, uh, and over the top rope goes Gino Hernandez and he is eliminated and uh, Bruiser Brody decides that he's going to deposit Grand Marcus right in Gino Hernandez's lap so we have the two remaining men rugged Greg Valentine brother of Johnny Valentine and Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody now with, uh, they have moved into ring number two, closest to the camera, and Bronco Lubitsch stays in as the, uh, as the referee. A lot of give and take here now, two tough customers. All right, now, as Boyd Pierce has, has told the fans at the Coliseum to remind them that uh, it's over the top rope to the concrete. The one man who remains is the man who gets the prize money. And Valentine, as tough as he is, and with that family trait of being able to pound people around and, and go after them, he is now in a position to win the money, but he's in against the toughest guy that you could possibly have to bank your future on, I'll tell you. Valentine trying to twist those legs and to get the weight of Bruiser Brody up on that top rope and to roll him free and clear. There's the lift, there's the push, the effort by, by Valentine. And Valentine has not yet been able to get enough of Brody over that top rope to do anything about it. And Brody's fans are hollering for him to get into a position to retaliate, and he is not in a position right now. He could be lifted over here right now, and as Valentine gets under him, he lifts up that weight with the strength of his legs pushing uh, for all they're worth and getting that shoulder in there tight, and uh, Brody hangs on. Brody keeps squeezing in there. And if Valentine doesn't get him over soon, Brody is going to recover enough to add to the troubles of Greg Valentine. He ripped him across the face that time, and now Brody is on an even footing for the first time in the past couple of minutes as he kicks at the inside of the thigh of uh, Greg Valentine, determined that he's going to raise a Charlie horse. Brody trying to lift Valentine over, but the biggest part of Valentine, just as it is with Brody a few moments ago, stays in the ring. Brody has that one foot up there. He's got to be careful that he doesn't get off balance. You see those legs twisted around him, and a twist by Valentine could have sent Brody out, but this give and take is hard stuff. This is, this is forearm walloping, and they don't have to worry about what's going to happen to their hands. As, as they smash with the forearm. And when you smash them into the turnbuckle, you're in much the same position. You're in a position then to 
let, let the turnbuckle give an unyielding blow to the opposition. And Brody looks around at the crowd and they scream their approval. Valentine in trouble as he is smashed into the, uh, into, into the turnbuckle. Crowd again tells Brody to move him and to get Valentine off on that concrete. They are pro Brody. They know him and they know him well. And they know Valentine and they know him well. But right now, Brody knows Valentine just a little bit better. And this could be the, the tough spot. Valentine in one of his favorite moves, looking to deposit his weight on Brody, but he didn't hit him with the elbow. As a matter of fact, he may have hurt that elbow. His body landed on, on Brody, the elbow landed on the, on the canvas. The referee is counting, but counts mean nothing in this match. It cannot end in a draw, and Valentine with his injured elbow, Brody now with his 300 pounds looking for a place to rest, and he comes over to do something about the damage he has already created. And this again puts both men on the canvas. Brody starting in toward Valentine, Valentine coming off, and the crash. This gives Valentine an opportunity to recover. He's going again for the elbow, and again he has landed with that bionic elbow of his on the hard canvas. Brody up and down, and oh, how he landed across the face of over the face of Johnny uh, of Johnny Valentine's brother Greg but uh, there was no pinfall here and must be over the top rope because this is still a continuation of the battle royal Brody trying to get him over Brody and he did Greg Valentine hauled off that time to smash into him Greg Valentine Bruiser Brody comes up here with a win that is crowd pleasing as it was tough. But he is the kind of a man who survives disasters, who makes disasters again, his ally. The event, and Bruiser Brody is the winner of the two ring battle royal.